Hello everyone, this is me Arijit back with a new video and in this video we are going to talk about stable diffusion web UI so basically automatic 11.11 so we'll see how you can install the latest version of automatic 11.11 in google collab and then i'll show you the basics of it like how you can convert a text to image and how by improving the prompts you can actually improve the generated image and then that generated image we are going to take to the image to image tab and there i'll show you how you can further improve those images or modify them so all these things we are going to cover in this video. Now, before we start the video, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button so that whenever we are going to make a new video on this topic, you will get update. And now without wasting any time, let's get started. Okay guys, so let's start. So at first we have to come to this Google collab link. So I'll provide a link in the description. You can just open that and you will come to here so you have to log in with your google account and then you have to connect here so you can just connect here and also you have to go to view resources change runtime type and you have to select t4 gp okay so it will take few seconds to connect so let's just wait for it so as you can see it's connected and the next thing is the first thing we have to do is we have to connect our Google Drive with it. And the reason is in uh, stable division, we have to download a lot of models and some of them are at least like something like 5 GB, 10 GB and something like that. So it's better if you just save all the models in our Google Drive. So that's why you have to connect to your drive. So you just click here and it will be connected with your drive. So it has been connected to the Google Drive. Next is we have to install or update automatic 11.11. Uh, now, basically, uh, in my case, I already have installed. So basically, it will going to take update. But in your case, if it is not installed, it is automatically going to download all the things required and going to install uh, automatically. So you just click here and just wait for it. So this part is done. Next, we have to install the requirements. Again, it will take some time. So just click here and wait for it. Okay, this is done. Now we have to download the model. Now here I'm going to install the SDXL model, but obviously you can install the models also. In that case, what you have to do, you have to provide the links here or path of the model. Okay, so if you have downloaded any model uh, in your Google Drive already, you can give the path here. Or if you want to download any other model rather than this models, you can also give the link here. Okay, but I'm just going to download the SDXL model. And also if you're a beginner or just starting, you can download this SDXL model. Okay, so you just select here and you just have to run this cell. So done. And now if you want to download any LoRa, you can also give the link here, but that we are not going to do in this video. Finally, if you want to install or uh, download any control net model, you have to choose this here. Now, uh, I recommend you that you only download a canny one if you're not sure what you are doing. So this canny model is very good. Now you can also download all models, but it will take a lot of space in your Google Drive. Okay. So if you are a beginner, you are just starting, download the canny one and you will be good to go at least. Okay. For the at least for the very beginner's part, I'd say. Okay, so it's done. And finally, we have downloaded all the things we need. Now we finally can start stable diffusion. Okay, so you just click it here and within few seconds, we are going to uh, get the link. Okay. Okay, so as you can see that the stable diffusion web UI has been loaded and here is the public uh, URL. So you can just click on it and within a few seconds it will be loaded. Okay, so as you can see here, the Wave UI has been loaded and also the model you can see been loaded here. So if you have multiple models, you will see those things here. But here in our case, we just only have that SDXL. So we have it here. Next here, we have to write the positive prompts. So basically the features our generated image is going to have. We are going to have write negative prompts. So basically the features our generated image should not have. And then there are a few other settings we are going to talk about. Okay, so let's just, Take a small example so i'll just write here cute little toy owl something like that negative prompt and here i'll give it high quality and in the negative prompt i'll write low quality so i don't want my generated image to be a low quality also i'll write blurred something like that now here in the generation sampling method i'm going to choose dpm plus plus 2m caras you can also use Oller and LMS, those things, but I'm going to use this one. 
then there is the sampling uh, sampling steps now the more sampling steps you are going to have the better generated images is going to be but also it is if you make it higher also uh, the time required will be more okay next you have the width and height so uh, basically here i'm not going to change this 5 to uh, 512 by 512 is fine for me okay next we have the cfg scale now cfg scale is the lesser the value will be the less importance it is good the model is going to give to your uh, prompt the higher the number will be uh, the more the model is going to uh, give importance to your prompts okay that's the basic concept okay so 7 is a fine number but also you can play with 7 to 12 7 to 12 you can use and check okay and sampling steps i'm going to increase a little bit so i'll just make it 50 okay and so that's it and now you can just click on generate so it's going to take a few seconds for me to generate it so as you can see it has generated a cute owl image okay so obviously not that good okay but now obviously if you have to make your output images good your prompt should be very good so here you can go to different websites here you are going to get example of prompts for example here i'm going to copy this prompt and i'll just put this prompt here and the link of this website will be also in the description and i'll just copy this one i'll paste it here similarly you can check the parameters so steps 25 and sampler is all at a so i'll just choose maybe all at a and i'll just put it 50 no problem in that and cfg is 8 seed is this okay so cfg uh so cfg i'll just make it 8 okay but seed i'm not going to use the same seed because i want a different result so seed is basically if we put a minus one so it's a random seed that means every time you're going to generate an image it's going to be different than the last one but if you get, give it a like fixed seed then every time with the same parameters it is going to generate the same image okay that is the concept so here now i'm going to again generate it and let's see what we get so as you can see that this time we got a really nice owl okay owl toy i would say okay uh and as you can see it's not similar to this one okay and even if i if i just generate it again you will see you are going to get a different one so let's just wait for a few seconds So as you can see this time also we got a new one and this one is also good so here as i think you have understood that the prompt has a very important role in generating these images so the better your prompt will be the better images you are going to get and also uh, the generation this methods and sampling rate cfg all those things have effects but prompt is the most important thing okay now uh, this is basically about uh, text to image now i'll also show you another example but in this time i'm going to show you image to image so we will take this image as an input and we are going to generate another image from this one so this icon you can just click and it is going to send your image to the image to image uh, as you can see in the image to image panel it will just send it and now i'll just delete all this uh, prompts and i'm going to give it a new prompt so the prompt i'll give it is that uh, change the color to red change the color of owl to red okay and i'll just give this one a uh, negative prompt i'll just give it low quality nothing else low quality and blurred again and now again now here also you are going to get a lot of like what i can say a lot of settings here but yeah, uh, this one I'll just use DP, uh, I'll use just GPN plus plus two M keras uh, width and height. I want to same CFG scale. I just make it eight. Okay, and denoise denoising strength. What is denoising strength? Is basically the more denoising you will add, the more it will change the image, the base image. And the lesser you will make it, the less change it will do. That is a basic thing. Okay, now I'm going to generate it. So let's see what we get. So as you can see here, it has generated an owl type of thing, obviously not good than this one, but as you can see, it has added red elements here. Okay. So now what you can do is, so I think it has added like a high amount of noise here. So what I'll do to decrease the noise, I'll just make this denoising factor less. So something like 6.5, I'll give it. Okay. And now I'll just going to generate it. So let's see what we get. So as you can see, it has added some kind of reddish color, I would say. 
in the overall image okay and now this time if you say that a lot of noise is not there so this image is not very much different from this one uh, but yes there's some reddish tone is here i can see okay so similarly you can play with the settings okay so like you can check with different denoising strength different cfg scale and also like uh, basically there is also features using which you can change a very particular part of this image not the whole part so those things i'm not going to discuss everything in this video so this was a very basic part of how you can use a uh, stable diffusion in google collapse or automatic 1111 so more videos on this topic are going to come very soon so i'll going to uh, also going to cover the in paint in paint sketch all those things in some other video so stay tuned for those things and if you have question any specific question for this video let me know in the comment section okay guys so thanks for watching this video i hope you have liked this video and in that case please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel now many more videos on stable diffusion automatic 1111 we are going to make in near future so you will get update on all those videos and that's it for this video and i'll see you in the very next video